So, ladies and gents, I am super excited for you guys to watch this interview with Ricardo. After kind of bumbling around for six months um, and trying to find his way with his agency, he finally enrolled in August of 2019 into Six Figure SMA, then eventually joining Agency Incubator. And uh, after joining Six Figure SMA within, uh, in his first week, he got his first client. And now 12 months on, he's celebrating his one year anniversary as an agency owner. He is making 12,000 a month. Uh, we tackle some very interesting uh, ideas around ROAS, around retention, around copywriting, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, I'm super excited for you guys to, to hear more about it. If you'd like to find out more about Agency Incubator, about how we managed to get such ridiculous results for our students uh, with such consistency, uh, go ahead and book in a discovery call with Caden, who's our student success manager here at uh, Gray Agency, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. So. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another student interview. We are here today with Ricardo, uh, rocking that fresh, stony, <laughs> stony <laughs> eye. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm excited to get into this one. Uh, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself, um, what your agency does, how many clients you're working with, uh, revenue, uh, how long you've been in this, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, man. Um, first, thanks for having me, of course. Uh, my name is Ricardo from Holland, Amsterdam. Uh, working on the agency since one and a half years. I started with Six Figures SMMA in, I think, August 2019, so almost a year. Then switched to Agency Incubator, doing around 12K right now with eight clients, mostly Rose deals, uh, and all thanks to uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. E-Man, of course. <laughs> no, 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 all down to your hard work. I hate what people say that. Um, Why? <laughs> especially, because, I have a rule on the student interviews. There's no complimenting me. You can do it uh, uh, okay. outside of student interviews. Okay, um, <laughs> for these, as I said, uh, right before we start recording, for these student interviews, I want to pick your brain as much as possible. And as I said, I want you mm -hmm. to leave the student interview going, how did Iman get that out of me? I, wasn't, I didn't want to re reveal that or, or share yeah, yeah, my yeah, secret yeah. sauce, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about one thing I immediately want to unpack is all eight of your clients are ROAS deals. So uh, mostly, yeah, out to eighty percent. Okay, okay. So you know, you've been an agency owner for well, when did you sign your first client? Uh, August directly one one week after joining Six Figure SMA. Wow, awesome! All right, so you've been an agency owner for what, like a year now? Coming up to a year? Yeah, year, yeah, yeah. I started with Ty Lopez, but that was, but I can't say that, of course. Then I joined your purse, and then within a week, I signed two clients. So yeah, That's awesome. you see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so I'd say from, you know, the, the point at which you actually one signed the years. first client. It, yeah, one, in, one year. So one it's, year. It's been one year. Yeah. You, you, you're kind of coming yeah. to your one year anniversary as a, as a you know, mm -hmm. proper agency owner. Yeah. Um, I would say that takes some balls to have 80% of your mm -hmm. clients as a percentage of ROAS deal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because I, I keep telling people, you know, there's certain levels you get to, you know, you go from doing just base to at a certain point doing yeah. a base plus percentage of ROAS to a certain point making mm -hmm. most of your money from ROAS to a certain point making yeah. most of your money from ROAS and offering a guarantee. Like there's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and the size of your, your testicles increases at each, each one of those stages, yeah, 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 you, yeah, you know, yeah, you got, yeah. you got to be pretty risk averse. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, quite clearly you got some big kahunas. Um, so, yeah, man. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> how'd you, how'd you go about making that decision that, um, you know, I, I see the upside with the ROAS and I'm willing to accept mm -hmm. the downside. Well, First of all, we started just with the, with the service-based deals. Uh, I did that in the beginning. And then after a few months, I think about three, four months, um, I saw that my revenue was only going up when I did outreach or did sales calls. So what you always said in the IG media and in the courses, right, or in Instagram, Instagram, SMA or Instagram Incubator, always replace yourself out of the, the agency, right? So the best thing you can do is just take yourself out of it. And I mm -hmm. found myself just being inside of the agency all the freaking time. If I want to increase revenue, I need to bring in a new client. So I was thinking, you know, you, I saw you doing the ROAS deals. I saw you getting awesome results. So I was like, yeah, how did you do it? And I mainly found that when I started with Agency Incubator and I did the, the uh, delivering results week, uh, I saw how you did it. Then I implemented that with my, my copywriter. And uh, we started hitting awesome results about... I think January or something, we did 55K with 8K ad spend with one of our clients and a lot more. And so we decided, yeah, okay, so we could ask 2K flat fee for it. We don't make more. 
And then we said, okay, we want to do the IAG media thing. So we're not, not copying you, of course, but we saw, okay, how can we grow revenue without getting new clients? So st if we still get the same clients, we still grow our revenue. But what you said, you mm -hmm. need some balls for it. So what we did was we searched for the formula from, okay, wait, what brought us from 8K to, to 55K? What was the, the big difference from, from spending 8K and getting 55 from getting spending 8K and getting 10, you know? Um, we found the formula within the ads. So we saw the copywriting was mainly 90% of the, of the results uh, with the great targeting, of course. Um, and then we said, okay, fuck it. We're just doing the rose deals. So we started with our first rose client, um, did it really well. And then we said, okay, we could take it to the next level and give a little guarantee. So if we, uh, if we, we do 20% rose deals at least, and if we don't hit 10K within two weeks, they don't pay any rose for the first month. Um, that means they, of course, need to have 4K in ad spend, otherwise we can't do it. But yeah, mainly because you did it with IAG Media and I saw, you know, it's not about bringing more clients, it's not a numbers game, right? It's about bringing more revenue within the same clients. So I thought, okay, fuck, if I can deliver results for this and we know how to do it, we just do it for the next one. Of course, we have a few fills in between uh, where it didn't work because Facebook compliance, you know, all that kind of shit. You, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, man, that, that's mainly the, the main reason I did the Rose deals because I want to grow my revenue without getting new clients. And eventually when within August, I want to start my ads too, uh, to, uh, to get clients and then just chill, you know, because honestly, outreach is because a lot of people are doing the agency thing around here in Holland uh, with shitty gurus, can't say names. Um, <laughs> they, they, they didn't do agency incubator. That's one thing for sure, because their outreach sucks. Um, and you know, it's it's num it's beginning to get a numbers game. You know, if you send a message on LinkedIn or email and or a Loom, and they're like, "Oh, you're number three today," you know. And I was like, "Yeah, fuck it. I don't want to be number three. Like, come to me if you want to have my services. Gosh, I know I can deliver you results." And uh, like the abundance mindset you you teach in uh, in mm. She Believe Achieve. Um, so I was like, "Fuck it. I just doing the rose deals." And since then. You know, doing the affirmation and yeah, having having big ass balls brought, brought me where I am right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Honestly, the in my opinion, I'm putting my foot down and saying that going forward as an agency owner, the most important thing is getting your retention to at least mm. six months. And, yeah. and by the way, I've had people like, I've, I've had certain people be like, oh, my retention is like 18 months. I'm like, all right, you're just lying to me. Like, like you're telling me that you haven't had a client leave after your minimum like minimum monthly um, yeah of course you know because my average retention right now is like six seven ish months i think it's actually mm -hmm. six point five six point yeah, five yeah, yeah. six something but mm -hmm. um i want to get that to nine months by the end of the year because i kind of had that realization um and for anyone who is watching this i strongly mm -hmm. recommend i did this a couple months ago i wrote down a list of all of my clients yeah. how long they stayed their monthly retainer and then their actual lifetime value like what mm -hmm. they actually brought me in. And I was so surprised. I found that like, you know, there were the obvious ones, you know, the big whales where, you know, we're doing four yeah. or five figures a month in billables. Those ones were like, I, I knew they would be up there at the top, but some of the ones that were really surprising to me were the ones that were like 4K a month minimum. So our lowest mm -hmm. minimum, yeah, yeah, but a, a retention of 11 months. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's really where I started, um, you know, that's really where I started mulling over and I started realizing kind of, as you said, like, it's not, if, if you're an agency owner and you sign mm -hmm. 12 clients a year, mm -hmm. even just one client a month, but your retention is, you know, eight months, nine months, even a year, you got pretty healthy and, and you know, you're, you're not charging, uh, you know, uh, peasant fees, uh, or maybe yeah. you, you are, you, maybe you are charging low ticket, but you've got some sort of mm -hmm. uh, upside and you've got some sort of performance kickback. And if you're a good agency, like you got a very, very healthy agency with just that alone. So yeah, yeah uh, I'm, I'm super glad you mentioned that. Another thing that I really, uh, uh, I kind of I want to unpack a little uh, because it's so true, and, but just most mm -hmm. people don't realize it. Um, I'd say above everything, above everything from the advertising side of things, the most important thing in order to get a client results is that they have a good product or service. That's yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah. Num num yeah. Num number two, I would say it, that's, that's number one. Number two is mm -hmm. the functionality of their website or their funnel. Like mm -hmm. you can't, you know, for example, with us, we work with info power clients. Like we told clients, like you can't just send cold traffic to a sales page and uh, expect them to convert on a $700 product. Mm -hmm. This is not going to happen. Or you get a lot of uh, e-commerce uh, brands where like they're, they're 
Their website is just totally out of whack. It's unfunctional. Mm -hmm. And uh, even just a lot of times their loading speeds are totally out of whack. And they, you, they, it's surprising that that's the livelihood of their business. And they don't realize that, you know, you should probably know these, uh, know this stuff. But, um, yeah. but below that, it's copywriting. And I've always said it. Mm -hmm. And like, I've always um, found, you know, I've always looked at like these experts and they're fucking, you know, and, and then kind of below that is campaign structure. And I've always looked at mm -hmm. these fucking experts with like 15 different CBOs and this and that. And like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to dilute the spend and manipulate the spend in all different directions. But yeah. then they just keep using the same ad copy for four months. <laughs> I'm like, and, I'm, and, and, and here's the thing you guys need to understand. It's like, it doesn't take a genius either through gut instinct to figure out what the best audiences are, or even if you don't have gut, good gut instinct as an advertiser, mm -hmm. the data will tell you eventually. Um, what really separates you apart is your is the copywriting, as you said. Mm -hmm. So if you could just touch on like when you made that realization. Yeah, man. The, the realization came when um, I started doing copywriting myself. So I, I kind of copied it from, from Kieran and then started to, to writing in story type, like, like how you write your copy. And I found myself hitting from about 0 0.8 CTR to above 6, 6 CTR. Our average CTR is about 3.5 right now. So on all ads, we all even, we even started for fun, eh? even we did, we did something for fun. We did a test, we did crappy copy and good copy on broad audience. We were like, okay, fuck the targeting. We just want to see what works better. Bad targeting or good, uh, good targeting, uh, good copy or bad copy. So we did a story copy. We was like spending hours on making that copy, and we did some shitty copy like everybody does, you know, like oh discount, discount, buy now, buy now, you know, this kind of shit. And we found that the bad copy did about I don't know 0 0.6 CTR, and the good copy did about four plus CTR. So that's like five times or six times more. Than, than the normal and and just on the same targeting right so the copy is because so, everybody scrolls then stops but they need to understand where it's about and if they see the copy it's like whoa awesome story i want to see more then they will click mm -hmm. and if you don't think copywriting is, is important i would stop being an agency owner because it's it's, it's 90 percent of your result yeah bro it, it is you know mm -hmm. and, 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 and the realization an when you start advertising yeah yeah as an advertiser it honestly is and people don't people don't even understand between a one and a 1.5 click through rate, like mm -hmm. if anyone wants to see this at play, just go to the link will be in the description. Just go to igmedia.com mm -hmm. and then at the bottom on the new website, click the case study and just watch the case study. That's my case study. Yeah. I run ads to get clients for the agency. I make a, a, I basically do the math, like the difference between one, uh, 1% 1 and 1.5% 1 uh, click through rate. Mm -hmm. What that, what that does to your final take home amount, because you're still spending the same amount on ads. It's just yeah, exactly. the amount of people the amount of people who basically the amount of leads you're getting, the amount of eyeballs you're getting to where it matters, not the ad side of things, but the funnel or the website side of things it mm -hmm. is, is nuts. People, it, it shocks me that uh, more people don't understand. And, yeah. um, you know, as, as you said, like, for, first of all, you got to look as an advertiser. I think in, as a business, you got to look and you got to go, all right, what's my competitive advantage. And yeah, if you, either if you're a performance marketer, your media buyer, or you personally write the ads, doesn't matter. My point is, if, as an agency, if you are well versed in the arena of copywriting, you mm -hmm. will shit on your competition. And not yeah. only that, um, and and because uh, you run ads for e-commerce businesses, right? Yeah, and also yeah. So, okay, okay. So for uh, you know, I'll, I'll chime in here real quick for e-commerce businesses. Mm -hmm. I get people all the time. They're like, "How do I run ads for like, um, you know, how do I write long form ads or compelling ads for e-commerce?" Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, and, and you know, we've done things like, uh, we've done mini blogs before, like mm -hmm. educating someone about the product and why it's a problem and then giving them a mini, uh, mini blog. Like, um, uh, we had this one, uh, client and, and it was a little, um, uh, workout guide, like directly. Mm -hmm. on the app. And there's yeah, so yeah, many yeah. ways that, uh, even with an e-commerce business, it doesn't just have to be your standard three lines, shitty generic copy. So, um, yeah. obviously for info product clients, it's easy to do a narrative base, um, uh, do narrative base side of things, but. Can you just touch on for your e-commerce clients, like what sort of uh, copy you're writing? Uh, mostly about not just the benefits, but the, the main thing I'm using is ethos, paths, and logos, man. That, that's what you taught in agency incubator. If you know what touches what, you know, like for instance, you're talking workout, you know, you're using paddles and you're saying, okay, you're telling a story about a, a man or a woman uh, that was fat before or was insecure or was bullied. And then she started with the program and started doing it and then hitting results. 
um, and just not 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 even doing a, a bright CDA from you need to have the workout right now because it's discounted. Just a story about someone being being you know overweighted and wanting to be non overweighted and then hitting that goal at the end of the copy and they will see like okay this is my situation right now and I want to go there you know you wanna, don't want to be overweight mm -hmm. and at the end of the copy they will see oh that person hit it and they will see in the eight thing oh wait what I, if they can do it I can do it too so we're really using the the story based. And that that's a lot. And honestly, just the benefits, bro. It's so mainly important that you fit the benefits inside the story. Uh, it works so much better. You can rather mm -hmm. tell a client story like what you, what you always do, or or a story about some I don't know Greek god or something. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, and that works a lot better than than just just having some stupid mm -hmm. stupid generic copy of like uh, forty percent discount is was best uh, or fast delivery or something you know and like mm. who, who the fuck buys on on those benefits you know <laughs> nobody everybody buys on on, on what, what it's about what, what why you buy it not what it is so that, mm -hmm. that's mainly really important so yeah in the service delivery like week you, you're, you're telling that but i think in pens of profit you'll, you'll you'll get a lot more about it so retention is mm. really important about that too and what just mm -hmm. it's about not just just it's about telling a good story and knowing what is the other person like if I, i'm scrolling to facebook and i'm, I'm overrated and i don't want to be overrated anymore and my product offers that that the product if i was the overrated person what would trigger me to click well of course a story about someone who was overrated just like me and isn't overrated anymore because of the program and then they're like oh okay what i want to do it too mm. that, 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 that's mainly mainly how i do it just like you mm. i think that's, so that's that's the main game changer Circling back, uh, I think one thing you kind of mentioned is, uh, first of all, you're going to be uh, running ads to your agency very shortly. Um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of at your kind of at how much your agency is making. It, it's about time. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing I wanted to touch on though is I got the impression that you want to be as hands off with the agency as possible, or at least get to a point where you're hands off with the agency. Yeah. What does the next one two years look like for you? And more specifically everyone kind of has a purpose for their agency. For some, it's um, the, the thing, that way they can live a laptop lifestyle. For me, like, I'm not really too good at doing that whole laptop lifestyle thing. I'll just be <laughs> on the beach like, all right, <laughs> conquer and dominate. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what, what purpose in your life does your agency actually serve for you and, and kind of what's the timeline? Honestly, to just show everybody, uh, just like every, what you do, and that, it, that everything's possible, right? So honestly, within the next one or two years, I want to have just the maximum of, of 10 clients, not more. And that, that brings me a lot more revenue every month because every time I'm spending more with the same, same copy I'm doing. So I get a row of six um, average on, on all the campaigns. I know if I spend 10K, I get 60K and, and, and 12K is for me, right? For one client. I just mm -hmm. want to do it that way. And mainly with two, within 12, 12 months or two years, I think the impact is mainly, mainly important from the client's part and my part too. So my part on the clients, the clients can't live without me. So I need to stay with me until they mm. either go broke or, <laughs> or, or I don't know, just, just, just don't want to be in business anymore or sell their business. Um, I think the retention part for me is, is mainly important. And mm. at least, at least I have 10 clients that are doing about 5k for to, to, to 10k for me. Just, just revenue share. So about 100k a month. I want to also have a client that's that's doing more than 10 million a year. That from just ads from us. That that's 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 a nice goal. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's sweet. That's sweet. Um, yeah, first of all, I apologize because it's hailing here in South Africa. Um, yeah, welcome to Africa, it's, man. It's, 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 it's actually winter here technically now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, what was I gonna mention? Yeah, all of that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to mm -hmm. bring up, what do, you, what do you look for in a client? I don't mean so much in terms of like when you're lead sourcing or this, I mean like, what does your perfect client look like? Perfect client, damn, bro. Uh, understands Facebook ads or they're not like, if, that, if I send them my business ID and they don't know how to make me partner of their ad account, then I'm already like, oh, fuck, where the fuck did I go in? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think mainly the, the, the part is that where they uh, know how to already do it but they don't know what the proven system is and they're willing to spend more than 10K a month. Um, they just know Facebook ads are, 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 are doing it. Um, and what you said, nice funnel, nice product, just a product that's not like, uh, here's a water bottle, drink some water. No, it's like, 
this water will, I don't know, uh, give you more energy than normal, you know, like with the, with the highly benefit. I think the more benefits of the product and, and the service they deliver, the more fun it is to write copy and, and get to the next level. That's, that's my, my ideal client. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I just muted myself because of the hail storm. <laughs> yeah, no problem, um, <laughs> now, 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 one thing that I, uh, I noticed, uh, I picked up very, very quickly is mm -hmm. like, even just the fact that you're, you're mentioning back to the service delivery, uh, mm -hmm. um, week of agency incubator, you know, I think it's like, uh, the, the, the training in there is close to five or six hours and you picked yeah. up something very specific. Um, and you mentioned mm -hmm. here the ethos, pago, yeah. uh, the ethos, Lago, pathos, pathos. Yeah. Yes. So, that's a very specific thing to remember to us. And mm -hmm. I, to be honest, you know, I, I even, I even wrote it, uh, you know, and I, and I made that module and there's certain stuff to be honest that like in the program I, I, I teach, but I also kind of mm -hmm. know at the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really going to fucking remember this. You, you, you know, no. um, it's, it's, it's an extra add on, you know, it builds the yeah, entire yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, module to get a narrative, but you remembered it and you, and you yeah, implemented it, you know? Um, <laughs> so, so I, I guess, that tells me a lot about you. The fact that, you know, you, you don't just watch something and you're just like, Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Whatever. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you actually take it to heart. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you've been in this for a year now, you're making 12,000 a month with your agency. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the, the biggest reason, uh, if you scale to 12 K in the first year? Uh, good results. Cause results are everything, man. If you don't mm -hmm. get any results, you will, you will never get to 12K. If you have shitty results, you can get 10 clients, but you will lose them in, in two, three months. So uh, retention is really important. So good copy for your clients. Uh, honestly, ask for referrals from your clients, man, because maybe most those people and agency owners are afraid from, oh, if I get good results, I can ask it, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm just a brutal motherfucker, you know? I'm, I'm just going to the client like, hey, give me some referrals. I, I, I'm doing good, give me some. And then just give me referrals. They're like, okay, I know someone and don't worry. And the most, most ancient ones are, are, are not willing to, to take the set because they're afraid or they will say no. Well, if I, if I give you 50K a month for 8K, 8K, 8K ad spend, and I'll tell you, come on, give, give me, give me some referrals. You will not say no. That, that's, that's incredibly stupid. If you're like, oh no, no, I don't want, I don't want everybody else to have good results. Of course they want. So I think referrals is really, really important. Um, and just focusing on getting results for your clients instead of growing your business because growing your business is nice but if you don't have the retention you will never get to 12k because then you will get hit 10k then the next month you will get 6k and then you will get in the loophole right and mm. don't get in the loophole just i just you know get get results for the clients i think it's mainly important and use the use the the, the ethos pathos logos thing for the for the copywriting and use the mm. stories because retention is really important man if you don't you can't grow a business on revenue that's 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 going like a roller coaster, you know. <laughs> mm, mm, you want to have mm. SpaceX revenue? It goes above, 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 <laughs> above. above. <laughs> yeah, you want to be like Elon Musk. Yeah, eight hundred dollars when you say your stock is too high, and then the next month yeah. it's still at a <laughs> thousand. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that's really important, man. Really important, like what you said, retention, man. It's it's all about retention. And I found that out when I when I uh, about got about twelve clients or something, and I was running, 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 running and, and in the loop all right. And then uh, next month I lost about nine clients because I have bad results, like honest. And then I found myself like, what? Well, I can focus on getting new clients every freaking month and then getting there, getting there together. But if I just focus on the results first, so I lock myself in for one, one and a half month, got results, came back, showed the results to the clients. And, and honestly, you, you don't, you need, I don't know, one out of three sales calls, you will get a close if you have results. If you just get one client or two clients and you get them results within a month, just just call call the next client or, or have the next sales call and the client's like, oh, you have results? Yeah, man, here, show me. You can just screenshot your, your business manager and the, the client will be like, what the fuck? And you'll be like, okay, <laughs> double the service price. <laughs> 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 you know, that, that that's important, man. Like what you said, retention, man. Retention is all. Just just good results mm -hmm. and retention. That's, that's awesome. really important. Well Dude, uh, you dropped some gems. Uh, this has been a, mm -hmm. a hell of a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so, man. So I thank you for uh, for coming on. No problem, man. Thank you for your time.